The Baltimore Ravens should do whatever it takes to get Roquan Smith under contract long term. We talk about why. Continue recapping the Ravens' Week 14 win against the Steelers and more coming up next year on this episode of Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And we return here with another episode of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostrecker of Ravenswire. We are here always on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you so much, as always, for tuning in with us, making us your first listen today. We're free and available on all platforms, including over on YouTube. So be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel in video form. Also, follow along with us in audio form. We are daily putting out Ravens content Five days per week, so Ravens news, analysis, updates, and more. We got you covered here on Locked On Ravens. And today's episode of Locked On Ravens is sponsored by Simply Safe Home Security with Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe. 24/7 monitoring agents capture evidence accurately, verify threat is faster for police response. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Visit simplysafe.com/slash locked on NFL to learn more. And we now are going to dive into a plethora of topics here on today's show. And we're going to continue recapping what happened in week 14 against Pittsburgh, a huge 16 to 14 win for Baltimore. But there were multiple players who stepped up in that game. So while we'll continue recapping more of in a general sense in the second segment, I do want to talk about Roquan Smith and why the Ravens should do and, and really must, in my opinion, do whatever it takes to get Roquan Smith under contract long-term in Baltimore. We'll do that in the first segment. Then in the final segment, we'll talk a bit about what John Harbaugh had to say to the media on Monday yesterday. Also continue diving into some AFC North talk as well with that division coming down to Baltimore and Cincinnati, it looks like. So let's talk Roquan Smith now. Obviously, the Ravens acquire Roquan Smith in the trade deadline. You trade a second rounder, a fifth rounder, and A.J. Klein, who actually is not even on the Bears anymore. He's in Buffalo, I believe it is now. So he's had a whirlwind himself, but the Ravens go out there and get a difference maker. And I know a lot of people were talking about at the trade deadline wide receiver, which I still think they should have done. And I've talked about that before people, people were talking about wide receiver. Are they going to go for an inside linebacker, which ultimately was the choice Could they go out there and get a cornerback was an offensive lineman available. But Roquan Smith is one of those difference maker players where giving up a second round pick for the Ravens, you don't really hear of them doing that too often. So the Ravens obviously valued him and what he could bring to the defense playing alongside a player in Patrick Queen, who right now, both of them, Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen are playing phenomenal football, but Roquan Smith has come into a defense and the the defense was playing well without him, right? The, The Ravens, Was it an absolute necessary need for them to go out there and get Roquan Smith? Yeah, I don't think it was. I think that they could have done without him, but the ability to bring him in and pair him with Queen and put him on this defense that also has players like Clayus Campbell and Marcus Williams and Marlon Humphrey and all these guys that are so good. It's just adding another star. You can never have too much depth. You can never have too many stars. Now, a big storyline for Roquan Smith was obviously going to be the fit. How was he going to fit in in Baltimore? There wasn't really a ton of concern. He's just a player that you can plug and play and everything will probably work out. And so far, it definitely has. But the other kicker for Roquan Smith was the contract situation. The Ravens have been dealing with Lamar Jackson's contract situation for what feels like forever now. They'll have to, again, figure that out as the offseason comes up. And I know, look, the Ravens still have a ton of stuff to do this season in 2022, regular season-wise hopefully playoff wise, hopefully Super Bowl wise, even as well. But when you're looking at what Roquan Smith has done so far, that's what sparks this conversation for the 2023 off season where Roquan Smith, since coming to the Raven, Spencer Schultz, friend of the show, put this stat out here. So shout out to Spencer since acquiring Roquan Smith, Baltimore's defense has allowed point totals of 13, three, 28, 10 and 14, holding four or five opponents to 14 points or less. 13.6 13.6 points per game. Now, it's not just Roquan Smith, right? But Roquan Smith has made a difference. This defense is playing, I think, a lot faster, a lot more confident. I think Roquan Smith lets guys like Patrick Queen play much more freely. And for Smith, 
his contract is up after this season. So he will be eligible for a franchise tag, a long-term extension, whatever it may be. So the question becomes, should the Ravens go out there and extend Roquan Smith? And I believe they should. And I've made that clear. He is a difference maker, but how much money are you going to give to an inside linebacker? That's another key question here. But for a player in Roquan Smith who has the sideline to sideline speed, is so good against the run, can win one-on-one against running backs, tight ends. You can even put him in the slot and win against those guys as well. He is a do-it-all player who does not have a ton of weaknesses at all. I mean, he's someone who you can kind of – put aside and say, Hey, you know, we're going to want you to do this and he can do it. He'll go out there and do it for you. He also, I think has bought in already to the Ravens culture. He hasn't even been in Baltimore for that long, but it feels like he is already buying in as do most players who come to Baltimore based off and at least track routers. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody, but it feels like it is for Roquan Smith. So in terms of extension, what would the Ravens want to give him? What would they be willing to give him? Well, looking around the league, at what the linebacker contracts are so far. The richest deal is Shaq Leonard of the Colts, currently 98.5 total value there. You have 19.7 per year. That leads all linebackers. Fred Warner of the 49ers, $95.2 million. He has $19 million per year. Then you have C.J. Mosley. I'm very familiar with C.J. Mosley here in Baltimore. Jets gave him that $85 million deal, 17 mil per season. So those are the top three in terms of average per year, 19.7, 19, and 17. Roquan Smith has a real shot to break the linebacker bank here and become the highest paid player in average annual value. You know, it is going to depend on how the Ravens want to structure the deal. I would assume if the Ravens do sign both Lamar Jackson and Roquan Smith to long-term extensions in 2023, They would probably maybe want to front load one guy and back load the other for cap flexibility. I don't know. The cap also is continuing to rise and hopefully will continue to rise. So that will do something. But Roquan Smith could top 20 million per season. So I personally, I would be fine giving Roquan Smith the five year, $100 million contract. I think if you can either front or back load, depending on what you're doing with Lamar, you're probably back loading Lamar's deal. And there are a lot of financials in terms of guarantees average annual value with his deal that go into it, or is Lamar going to get franchise tagged and you have that 40 million on the books for 2023? Do you want to backload Roquan Smith's contract? So there's a lot that goes into it. Obviously, if you're looking at guys that money comes off the books, Marcus Peters, Clay Campbell, what's his status going to look like? There are a couple other players as well who you could restructure and, and whatnot. But I think for Baltimore, Roquan Smith is too valuable to let go at this point. They gave a second round pick for him. That is not, you know, that's not binding. The Ravens can still let him walk in free agency and still let, you know, that third round comp pick come to him. But he clearly makes a difference on this defense. He clearly makes his teammates more confident. And I think he feeds off his teammates. It goes both ways. I think Roquan Smith is a great fit in this Baltimore defense. I think Roquan Smith is a great fit for this Baltimore team. And so far, he's done everything that's asked of him. I mean, the Saints game, that was his Ravens debut. He goes out there and and goes one-on-one with Alvin Kamara, makes a couple of really nice run stuffs in there. And then he just he's continued to get more comfortable and get better in this system, playing around his teammates. So I'm excited for what the rest of the season has to bring for Roquan Smith. But I think he has shown enough in a small sample size where you can confidently say, and obviously it's it's not just the small sample size of Baltimore. He did it for years in Chicago. He's a two-time All Pro for a reason. He's just 25 years old. I think he'll he will be 26 by the time next season rolls around. So you can give him a five-year deal. You know he's 30, 31 around there. So you, I'd feel fine with that, especially if they're you know you can give him give the team an out after the third year or after the fourth year, if you want to, depending on guarantees and signing bonus and whatnot, there's a lot, but just from, from a pure face value perspective, I think Baltimore should sign Roquan Smith to a mega long-term extension. His performance against the Steelers is, is kind of what sparked this conversation and the consistent play we've seen. Smith had six tackles, had the interception, had the sack, do it all player. That's what that's what it comes down to. He is a smart football player. He is someone who understands the game, someone who elevates his teammates. And that is what you want. And then we've had the conversation about, you know, do the Ravens have their long term inside linebacker duo of the future in Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen? 
I believe they do. The Patrick Queen extension is a conversation for another day, and the Ravens don't even have to worry about that for another couple of years if they don't want to. But for real, Quan Smith, I think Baltimore should do whatever it takes to get him under contract long term. It doesn't have to be today. It doesn't have to be tomorrow. But I do think that what he has proven so far, I expect that continued production from him. I don't expect a, a steep drop off or anything. So Roquan Smith has been a welcome addition to this Ravens defense. I've loved Roquan Smith in his game going back to his days at Georgia. He was just, you know, he was so good. There was no way the Ravens were getting up to where Chicago took him in that draft. So I think Baltimore, they got a good one in Roquan Smith and they should not let him get away. Coming up in our second segment here, though, on Locked on Ravens, we'll be diving into a continued recap of Baltimore's Week 14 game against Pittsburgh, talking a bit about Roquan Smith some more, Patrick Queen, the Ravens running backs, the offensive line, and more. So be sure to stay tuned. So a ton to dive into on the show. But first, this episode is sponsored by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From pro football to college bowl season to basketball and the World Cup, they've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use a mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. We're back here, our second segment of Locked on Ravens. Here on Tuesday, Kevin Ostrak here, your host, still here with you. And let's talk about that Ravens and Steelers game some more. Obviously, we've had... A day or so to digest the win for Baltimore, 16 to 14 over Pittsburgh, nine and four is their record now, three and zero in their division. And this was again the, the grinded out game that many, including myself, expected. And it was one that I think the Ravens feel very rewarded by winning, both offensively and defensively. And I know circumstances for the Ravens, you know, you, you got to keep circumstances or take them at least into account. And the Ravens' circumstance on offense was the fact that Lamar Jackson missed this game with a knee injury. Tyler Huntley leaves with a concussion. So you're down to Anthony Brown, your third-string quarterback. And the Ravens dominate on the ground for the entire game, which, again, is what I talked a bit about on yesterday's show in our our initial recap show, where hopefully this is a wake-up call, a spark for this offense, where, look, you cannot run the ball 60 times a game and never pass and win. But at least I feel like the Ravens may have been able to wake up and say, hey, we can run the ball a lot and have the pass game feed off of that, and we can win games that way. I think that is hopefully what they're saying to themselves. J.K. Dobbins, you know, didn't look necessarily 100% throughout the course of the game, but he did look good. I'd say overall had the 44 yard run where I do know, you know, looking, he looked like he favored the knee a little bit on that run, but still. He made a huge impact, 15 carries in the game for him and led this team with 120 yards in a score. I mean, eight yards per carry in his first game back against, again, this I, I'm going to keep hammering this point home. The Steelers' run defense is good. The Ravens' run offense is better. That's just what it is. The Ravens' offensive line played outstanding in this game. Tyler Linderbaum played well. The Ravens without Kevin Zeitler go with the guard rotation of Tristan Cologne. And Ben Cleveland there. Shout out to those guys. You have Ben Powers, Ronnie Stanley coming back, Morgan Moses on the right side as well. Baltimore does not win this game without their offensive line. They do not win it without J.K. Dobbins. And even Gus Edwards playing well with his 13 carries that he took for 66 yards, 5.1 yards per carry. Just just steady. Gus Edwards has been steady. And for Baltimore, a team that, you know, we, we can admit it, Baltimore struggled on offense since coming out of the bye. 16 points. You need to do a little better than that, but circumstances, you got to take the circumstances into account. Anthony Brown comes in, completes three of five passes for 16 yards. So not necessarily all these pro bowl, all pro stats, but he comes in, he gets the job done. He's, he does what he's asked. And that is to not make mistakes and make a couple of big time throws. He he made a huge throw on third down. I believe Mark Andrews was the recipient of, of the ball. I'm maybe I'm remembering, or I think it was Mark Andrews though, but again, whether it is Lamar Jackson or Tyler Huntley or Anthony Brown or whoever it's going to be on Saturday for the Ravens against Cleveland, I think they do have to be feeling confident in their option, even if, you know, for Jackson, he's a Pro Bowl, all pro, obviously. But, you know, Tyler Huntley is a good backup. Anthony Brown, I think, proved that he has the potential to be a good backup as well. Coming into a hostile environment in Pittsburgh, his first NFL action, and he's able to, you know, again, not make mistakes. I think that's very It was very good of him to be able to do that, and I give a big shout-out to him overall there. Baltimore's red zone offense, 
you'd like to see the improvements. They just, they've not been good in the red zone this year. We talked about it yesterday. The Ravens like one in three or one, four, three in the red zone. And I talked about how it was a little bit overshadowed by, Oh, look, the Ravens get deep into Pittsburgh territory. And then Justin Tucker makes the field goal to, to pass Matt Stover, become the Ravens all time scoring leader. So again, big congrats, but you, you hope they were able to just punch it in the end zone there. Then later in the game where Baltimore really only needed a field goal to go up by two possessions. So people were content with the field goal, which I get right. You're up two possessions, a touchdown or a field goal does that for you, but you want to see them punch it in the end zone there as well. So that's an area for improvement. Third down on offense, also four of 13 on third down for the Ravens. Kai just my own. I talked about it on Friday. If they can run the ball effectively on first down, effectively on second down, get into those third and short situations, it makes it a lot easier. I thought Baltimore did a pretty good job at that overall, but I think moving forward, a key for them is to sustain drives. And we've seen over the past couple of weeks, obviously the 16 play 91 yard game winning drive against the Broncos in week 13. You have a 13 play drive, I believe it was, in, in week 14. So I think they're they're starting to get it on offense, but they have to continue with the ground game. The, the identity of this Ravens team is running the football, right? I, I think sometimes they can get too cute with things. Sometimes they can try to air it out. I'm not saying that they can't throw the ball. I'm not saying Lamar can't do it. I'm not saying Tyler Huntley can't do it or Anthony Brown can't do it. But if you can just absolutely pound the ball down the opponent's throat, and you're able to feed a play action pass off of that. You're able to feed a deep shot off of that. You can do so many things. And we have seen that this isn't 2019 anymore. It's not the end of 2020, but this is an offense that has potential with guys, hopefully continuing to get back. You're hopefully going to get Lamar Jackson back soon. You know, Rashad Bateman's not walking through the door or anything, but again, I think Lamar does make a big difference. Obviously he's, he's Lamar Jackson. Of course he will. But defensively for the Ravens, we talked a bit about Roquan Smith and his performance, but I got to give a shout out to Patrick Queen as well. His running mate there, six tackles for Queen, had an interception as well. Queen goes, hey, Roquan get an interception. I can do that too. And super impressive catch by him. The linebacker duo PQRS, you know, Patrick Queen, Roquan Smith. I, I, don't, I don't know who made that up. I saw it. So apologies. It wasn't me. I'm, I'm not taking credit for it, but I like it. The PQRS for Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith, Marcus Williams gets back in the action as well. So look, th this wasn't a 40 to nothing blowout where the Ravens were in control the entire game. They weren't. The Ravens could have easily lost this game if one or two things went the opposite way. If, if Mr. Trubisky is able to punch one of those red zone possessions for the Steelers into the end zone. I mean, you're talking about a team in the Steelers that did go two of four in the red zone. So better than Baltimore, but at the same time, Three turnovers deep in Baltimore territory, it's not going to get you a win. So if, if one of those gets in the end zone, maybe the Ravens do lose this game. But, hey, guess what? The defense forced the turnovers. They did what they were supposed to do to get the ball back into the offense's hands. Marlon Humphrey, not a great game from him. You know, he took accountability after we did see. And I think one of the cooler things in this game was actually a clip that surfaced yesterday. Pete Gilbert of WBAL actually put out the clip, and I know people, you know, from the stands who did it, but the Ravens were getting busy to renegade. They, they were pumping each other up, hyping themselves up. Renegade, obviously, it, they play. The Steelers play it in Pittsburgh in the, in the fourth quarter. And the Ravens were waving the towels like the terrible towels and, and getting pumped up, jumping up and down. You see Clayce Campbell and Marlon Humphrey and Jason Pierre-Paul and Justin Matabike and Roger Washington and, and Brent Urban. All these guys, you know, getting pumped up off a of renegade and it's a really cool clip i shared it on so many people shared it on twitter but i know i know pete posted the original clip so credit to him on that one it's really cool to see that it's it's like peak raven steelers where you have that rivalry aspect there's so much history between the ravens and the steelers and clayus campbell talked about how he was you know kept thinking about how you're not a raven until you beat the steelers until you beat the steelers now they have done that clayus campbell hadn't done that before this is Baltimore's first win against Pittsburgh since I believe 2019, if I'm not mistaken. So it's been a while. Baltimore gets a big win in, against a divisional opponent. They move that record to three and oh. And my favorite stat, I'm gonna say it again. They were they were one and five last year in their division. This is a huge step up for them, and it puts them in the driver's seat in the AFC North for multiple reasons. And coming up, we'll be talking about that AFC North, a bit about what John Harbaugh said to the media on Monday as well. So be sure to stay tuned. We still have a lot to talk about here on Lockdown Ravens.
But first, this episode is sponsored by Prize Picks, and the playoffs are here in Fantasy Week 15. For most leagues, begin the playoffs. And if you want a different twist on fantasy, be sure to check out Prize Picks. Prize Picks is super easy to use. They have a ton of current entries that I love, and you can use so many of them. And how it works is you pick two to five players, and if they will go score more or less than their Prize Picks projection. You can win up to 10 times money on any entry. There's no competing against other people. It shows you versus the projections available. Price Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch, including the NFL, the NBA, the MLB. You have NHL, PGA, college football, college basketball, and more entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. Is that easy? You have safe and best withdrawals and are currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive 100% deposit match up to $100 or promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, price picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, price picks will give you $50. Don't forget the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. We're back here, our final segment of Locked On Ravens, rounding out this Taco Tuesday episode. Kevin Allstriker still here with you, and we're going to dive into some AFC North talk and also what John Harbaugh had to say to the media. So let's start with John Harbaugh. He talked to the media on Monday as he does after games. And he had a lot of interesting stuff to say. He talked about Tyler Huntley. You know, obviously there were no updates on Huntley right now. He was in the concussion protocol. And he said they're deep in the protocol right now. So he said that there there wasn't a lot to share about who's going to be ready to play quarterback on Saturday for the Ravens. I know there's a lot of uncertainty with Lamar Jackson and his knee injury and obviously Huntley in the concussion. So the next man up would obviously be Anthony Brown. So we'll see what happens there. He also talked a bit about Kevin Zeitler and what went into the decision to not only make Zeitler inactive, but the guard rotation between Tristan Colon and Ben Cleveland. It was was interesting. He said that Zeitler was a game time decision and he was kind of had a flare up in the knee and it was sore. So he just said it didn't feel good enough. And they had the Tristan Colon and Ben Cleveland rotation ready to go. And he also mentioned Patrick McCarry as someone who could play the guard position and he had, he had a toe issue anyway, but both of them played well. So I'm glad that they were able to do that, get both guys some reps. And I'm glad that both of them played well. And there wasn't any, wasn't any crazy stuff going on there. Talking a bit about Ronnie Stanley and Tyler Linderbaum, the impact that those guys have and have had on the game. Stanley coming back in, you know, he said gives the Ravens so many other options. He's capable of doing so much, but he really had, he had a lot of praise for Tyler Linderbaum. He, he was so impressed and, Talked about how, look, Cam Hayward is one of the best players in football, and they put Cam Hayward over Linderbaum a few times, and that's not really their normal thing. And they thought that they were going to test Linderbaum, and that Tyler Linderbaum came through. So Har- Harbaugh seemed very, very impressed with Linderbaum. And he also talked about the Clays Campbell blocked field goal, talked a bit about Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen. So there were a lot of things that – went into this Ravens victory. We talked about just how many players made an impact, how many players stepped up. This was not like a one or two player effort where those guys carried the team across the finish line. There were definitely guys who carried them across the line, but there were multiple guys kind of dragging them, you know, kind of everybody tugging on the rope. J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, Glace Campbell, Patrick Queen, Marcus Williams, Roquan Smith, all, all those guys, Justin Tucker, everybody tugging on that rope. I know I'm missing some guys as well. The offensive line can – the offensive line, they could tug on that rope and everybody would fly over the finish line. So that's something that would be really funny to, to kind of imagine. But Baltimore with the win, obviously, again, as I've said, 9-4, and 3-0 and in the division. The division – it seems like it is Baltimore's to lose at this point. Obviously, I'm not counting the chickens before they hatch. You cannot do that in the NFL. But there are a couple of reasons that I've talked about before, and I even I talked about a couple of them yesterday. Cincinnati's division record right now is 2-3. and three. Baltimore's is 3-0. and oh, So that's really big based off of what you want to do there. But it's, it's going to come down to Week 18. It just, it just really feels like that to me, where the Ravens travel to Cincinnati, to the jungle, to take on that Bengals team. We'll see who's actually – active for Cincinnati. Trey Hendrickson suffered an injury. Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, those guys are pretty banged up right now. Baltimore's schedule on paper is also a little easier than Cincinnati's is, so you got to take that into account as well. Pittsburgh and Cleveland, I'm not – those teams are not in the race to me anymore. I I think it really does come down to Baltimore and to Cincinnati. But then if you take it a step further, we can talk about the AFC playoff picture. Baltimore currently the three seed right now behind – Kansas City and behind Buffalo. You also have, you know, Miami's in that hunt. Tennessee is in that hunt, leading the AFC South. 
talk about Cincinnati as well. So there are plenty of competitive teams in the AFC this year. And even if you go over to the NFC, you got Philadelphia, San Francisco with Brock Purdy doing their thing. So there are a lot of talented teams in the NFL. Baltimore is in that upper echelon, though, but they do have to put it together. There's a lot for them to work on. There's a lot for them to get better at. They cannot be content. They cannot stay complacent. Well, the red zone offense is not up to par right now. Third down offense not up to par right now. The ball was moved a little bit up and down on the Ravens' defense, and the turnovers were key. And this, this team's a high turnover team. They still rank, I believe, in the top five in turnovers this year so far. They've almost doubled their turnover total from 2021 already. So they get the ball back to their offense when it matters, but you either have to do that consistently or be able to limit opportunities for the opposing offense. So there are things to work on. And I think it's a good thing. The playoffs aren't here right now. Baltimore does have multiple weeks to figure out this stuff. Now they've already had those multiple weeks and we have seen recurring themes and recurring issues but the play clock stuff has been a little better over these last couple of weeks. I think we, we saw it creep up a bit in this game against Pittsburgh, but not too crazy, crazy stuff. But if the red zone offense over the next, let's say, let's say two weeks, if that can get better, if they can go two of three in the red zone, three of four in the red zone, third down wise, can you go 50%? Can you go eight of 16? Can you go six of 12 or whatnot. That is a step up from the three and 13s and the, in the four of 13s as well. So hopefully again, with Baltimore getting Lamar Jackson back soon, JK Dobbins, Marcus Williams, all those guys getting back and, and playing more snaps and getting acclimated. Baltimore has a deep team. Their roster is not perfect. I acknowledge that. And a lot of people also acknowledge that, but I think they have enough to make some noise if they can just be more consistent and play consistent football for 60 minutes. Can the defense play consistent football for 60 minutes? That's something I'm going to be looking out for. So the Ravens, they, they have the horses, but these next four weeks, this last month of the season, is going to go a long, long, long way in determining just how far the Ravens can go. Come playoff time, because I, I do think this is a playoff team. They have, I believe, a 98% chance to make the playoffs, according to 538. So they're, they're going to be there, barring some epic, horrendous collapse with a lot of things going wrong for the Ravens and right for another team or two. But this Ravens team has to get some stuff together. They're on the they're, they're on the right track, I would say. But again, they have a lot of runway. Well, actually, it's not, it's not a ton of runway. You only have a month left in the year. But if they can figure one or two big things out before the playoffs start, they have the potential to go a long way here in the playoffs. That's all I have for you here today on Locked on Ravens, though. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to get back here tomorrow. It's more Ravens talk from us, so be sure to stay tuned for that, and I will see you right back here tomorrow.